Amen, brethren, peace of the Lord. We're going to open our Bibles in Luke chapter 24. I'd like to greet the brethren in Houston, the brethren from Port St. Lucie and from Pompano, and also, I believe, a few from Brazil. I'd like to greet everyone in the peace of the Lord. Luke 24, we're going to read from verse 13. Luke 24, 13, forward, says the following. Now, behold, two of them were traveling the same day to a village called Emos, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained, so that they did not know him. And he said to them, What kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are said? Then the one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? So they said to him, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us when they did not find his body. They came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. Then he said to them, O oh, foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Amen. My brethren, the word shows us in the Gospel of Luke that all the way to chapter 23, we've seen, we can see the entire ministry of Jesus, why he came to the world, his earthly ministry. And we see at the end there, before chapter 23, we see that Jesus, because he was preaching the gospel, because he was the Son of God, because he was misunderstood, Jesus was imprisoned, judged, condemned, crucified, and buried. On chapter 24, we'll see a miracle taking place. It says that on the third day, on a Sunday, Jesus resurrects. And that was seen by a couple of sisters. And they went to the tomb, not with the understanding that they would see Jesus alive. But they went to the tomb um, waiting to see the body of Jesus, Jesus dead. And there they went to, to pour out uh, perfumes and spices upon the body of Jesus. And when they arrived there, they saw that Jesus was no longer there. He had resurrected. And later on, we'll see, from the moment in which we read, we see two disciples that also walked with Jesus. They had already forgotten. They had the same understanding, the same thought, same idea of those women that went to the tomb. 
for the disciples, Jesus was dead, buried, and that would be the end of everything. Everything that they saw, the witness, the what everything they was were hoping for, and they said, "We thought that he was the one that would come to resolve the problems of Israel." And they also say, "He was the prophet. He was the prophet." They were all saying that on the past tense. For them, Jesus was already there. That that was the end of the story. Jesus had that was over. But now Jesus comes for them on the way back to Emmaus, the town that where they used to live. They were now in Jerusalem, and for sure, they have seen Jesus being judged, crucified, killed. Surely they saw the tomb of Jesus. I cannot say it for sure, but I believe that they saw everything happening. Until the death of Jesus, they may have been witnessed witness of it, but what is interesting is that they forgot something that Jesus had said that was very important. Jesus said exactly what was going to happen to them, to him actually, and Jesus also said that he was going to resurrect, and they witnessed everything but forgot an important point, which was the resurrection of Jesus. My brother, sadly, today, in the world when you're living, many people live like this. They live also alive, still alive, in the same way as if Jesus was buried, and that would be the end of the story. And the people that live in this situation are going to speak like the, a few points here, a few situations that lead people to the, the consequence of a person that met Jesus that lived in the presence of Jesus, that now lives like if Jesus was dead. Jesus appears to them, and there Jesus was not recognized by those men. According to their eyes, their eyes were closed. They didn't discern, they didn't understand who, who Jesus was. And now Jesus begins a walk with them, with all, all three of them. They were not only, no longer two, but they were three. They begin to walk towards Emmaus. And Jesus asks, Hey, why are you so sad? Why are you talking about? Because they were, though, they were both talking about this, the past. And they were sad because Jesus was, had died. And Jesus entered into this story, and Jesus asked, What is going on? Why, why are you like this? And they asked Jesus, Man, where are you come from that you don't know what is going on? Everybody's all talking about this. Jesus, the prophet, the one who he was, and now he's dead. And at that moment, my brethren, Jesus begins to show to them in the word. Jesus begins now to speak to them from Moses all the way to Malachi. And then Jesus begins to speak about the prophet, what had been prophesied about Jesus, and they still did not understand. Now imagine, seven miles, you're hearing Jesus talking. It was like a, a Sunday school, right? was the best Bible school that existed, the most, the Bible school most mentioned in the Word. Imagine you participating on a Sunday school with Jesus present. There was no question that you would ask that would not get an answer. I would say that that, I'm sure, was the best Bible school that they ever that was that ever happened seven miles it may have been like one hour almost two hours of conversation imagine at that time didn't have real roads or a sidewalk everything was like you know, tracks uh, in the midst of the uh, the mountains and desert may even have been a little longer at that time but today it would be more or less like this a little less than two hours but now Jesus says, you, 
you are foolish. They, you have hardened heart because you do not hear the word. And the word shows us that Jesus, he understood the situation of those men. And Jesus says, look, you are, you have, been, have forgotten. You are disobedient. You are not now put in your life my word what has been taught the scriptures but Jesus in no way he said spoke in the sense that we could even say you know to correct them no Jesus spoke to them in love in this word Jesus said in, in a loving way comprehending the situation because my brethren Jesus know our lives Jesus knows exactly what happens in our hearts. Jesus understands uh, how many times we fail. Jesus is the only one who is the good shepherd. He knows his flock. He knows the sheep. He knows our flaws. He knows our limitations. He knows the insecurity that many times we go through, the uncertainty that we go through. That's why Jesus took seven miles in order to call those men according to their own eyes, so that their eyes may be opened spiritually, so that they will be able to recognize who Jesus truly was. My brother, Jesus does that to us. He knows us. Because he went through what we are going through. He knows when you are in pain. He knows when you are in need. He knows that many times... Oh, let's say in our days, the lack of relations with other people, being able to go out from your house, seeing different people, many times this affects our, our personality, our lives, our secular life. But Jesus knows because he went through this. He went through hunger. He didn't have a place to sleep. How many times Jesus spent awakening? How many times Jesus went to pray alone and the disciples were sleeping? How many times the disciples went out to eat and Jesus stayed evangel evangelizing the people, doing God's work? How many times? Because He knows us. He knows each detail of our lives. He knows each second of our lives. That's why the Lord Jesus went with all the patience with that, those men because their heart was closed, completely alienated to what was happening at that day because they were still living the past. They forgot the present. They forgot the prophecy. Their understanding was an understanding of history, of what had been spoken by the prophets. But they were not leaving it. Remember, today, in our days, we see many people living their lives, living what they do, like if Jesus was still dead. People inside of their own church. We see people in our circle of friends, our family, people that live like this. They live like Jesus was still dead and buried. And that's that will be the end of the story. And the consequence of this, the result of this, we'll see that the people leave moments like this. How can we affirm this? Because when a person is dead, the person no longer speaks, no longer has feelings, no longer come close to us. When a person is dead, it's dead, it's over. So, for many today that are around us, Jesus does not speak anymore. Jesus no longer has power to heal, power to speak to them, to manifest in their lives, power to hear our prayers, power to come toward us, power to hear, power to answer and most importantly, power to give us victory. So if Jesus is dead, those people, they are defeated people, people that live day after day, 
they don't see anything getting better. They don't see anything like they, they have no hope. There's no change. There's nothing. They live their lives waiting simply, waiting for the end. Those are people that know the history, people that know Jesus, literally speaking, but they do not know the prophetic Jesus, the living Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, Jesus that was seen by John in the island of Patmos, the glorified Jesus, the Jesus victorious, the Jesus that is at the right hand right hand side of the Father, and is always at the disposal of man. People that live like this, people that can't see grace, they can't see joy, they cannot receive from the Lord a blessing, because what they receive today, and then they lose it tomorrow. There are people like this, people that, when they think that they know better than everyone else, they are never willing to hear a word, a spiritual gift that comes from the Lord, Many times the deacon speaks with them, and many times the pastor speaks with them, giving them word. They never listen. Oh, pastor, everything's fine. We don't need anything. Everything's fine. In other words, uh, live it like this. You are there. I'm here. It's like this. Maybe you're the only one that doesn't know what is going on. We know Jesus died, and that's it. You don't know what is going on. You're the only one. You are a foreigner, you're a, a tourist, you don't even hear in Israel not to know, and we know. But do they know? They know that Jesus is dead. But they didn't know that Jesus was alive, the revelation, because the prophecy had been fulfilled. So, and the result of all of this, of people living like this, you know what it is? It's sadness in their heart. Jesus asked, why are you sad? What is going on with you? Right? Where are those disciples that were always there in the midst of the multitude, always testifying, giving glory to God, giving hallelujah, glorifying the Father? Everything that was done, they had joy. Where is the joy of salvation? Where is it? The transformation that took place in your life. Why you said those people today, there are people like this, people that are thirsty, People there are sad because they do not have the assurance of salvation. The assurance of salvation is this. Salvation is joy. Salvation is eternal life. Not only to be lived in heaven. Salvation has to be lived here. Salvation is a new creature to live in a different way for you to be the target of the law, the grace, the mercy of God. So people live like this but now when Jesus, now bringing this message to a close, when Jesus then finished giving this amazing Sunday school, uh, Bible school, their eyes opened, their, then their hearts burned because the Holy Spirit was there. Jesus revealed was there in the presence of the Trinity, the Word, the Holy Spirit, Jesus present there. And now when Jesus, like if it, Jesus was going to continue on his walk, after they had seen that after that difficulty had been lifted after they went back to the world because Jesus Jesus mentioned these creatures to them so when they went back to the word of God now their invitation was stay with us stay with us come into our house come to have a supper and at that moment there they realized who that person was, that was Jesus. That moment that was brought that brought them through the word. So Jesus break the bread and their eyes are open. And they recognize who Jesus that it was Jesus. My brethren, we live a moment in which the church of God, the work of the Holy Spirit, where you who are servant, whatever you are, you represent the church. You are temple of the Holy Spirit. Wherever you go, you represent the church. We need to have in our hearts the same request that those servants made there. There's two disciples. Stay with us. Don't leave us anymore. Be present with us. And this is the same desire of Rebecca when 
When Elisha went there, sent by Abraham, Elisha went there, Elisha went there, and recognized Rebecca and brought the invitation, the, and made the invitation. Rebecca said, Oh, I need to go, go away. And the family of Rebecca said, Stay, Rebecca. The parents said, No, I can't stay. I have to go with him. Remember, so this is the same desire that needs to stay in our hearts. We need to depart. We need to want and desire that Jesus remain in our hearts so that you, we may depart to return with the Father. Amen? So here is this message, a word that is well known by everyone, but a word that surely the Lord tonight will touch in our hearts and the Lord, the Holy Spirit, will burn the hearts and renew, bring joy. The Lord will remove the doubts and sadness because Jesus is present and Jesus is alive. And he overcame death. He overcame the enemy of man. He overcame what is our greatest fear is death. But in Jesus, we have eternal life. Amen. May God bless us. Let us hear a song. Senhor, 
My brethren, let's have a word of glorification to the Lord. One of the sisters can pray. Actually, somebody from Houston. Is there someone from Houston that could pray? It can be uh, a brother. It doesn't have to be a sister. Brother, sister. Lord God, we praise your name, Father. We praise you, Lord, for your grace, for your mercy, for your word. So that in spite of our failures and limitations, of our, you are seeking us, Lord. You are always beside us. We praise you for your love that lasts forever. And it's good to belong to you, Lord. We praise you for this privilege of being sheep of your pasture, Lord. We praise you for your grace, your protection, your provision in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 The Lord gave a spiritual gift when we were praying for the service. The Lord was showing a couple, and they were inside of a car. And it's interesting that the direction, in the direction of the car, the car, the, the steering wheel was pulled 50% by the husband, 50% by the wife. And this, this lack of control caused the car not to drive. And this disagreement, the car would turn to one side and sometimes it would turn to the other would cause the vehicle to stop even besides bringing a harm to the wearing out of the tires and a compromise on this, the whole system. So imagine you're inside of a vehicle, the wife is here and the husband is there. And this struggle, this, this disagreement, it is something complicated, isn't it true? And the children that were on the back, when they were, they saw this, I'm, I'm speaking the vision literally, and then we're going to give the discernment. The children that were sitting on the back seat, they were speaking to the parents, look, move, go forward. Let's go forward. So the parents heard the children, and then they began to, with one, a single understanding, they began to move forward. So let's go. The couple, when they when they are in Jesus, they think that the husband can give orders 50% and the wife has 50% of the power. If, when they are both giving orders, there is no room for the Holy Spirit to manifest. And we know that when the couple, they come to the Lord, they get married in Jesus, it is a string of three three folds. It is a rope with three strings. It's not two. Jesus is there. The Holy Spirit is present. God is present. The Trinity is there. So he's no longer a man who gives orders. It is the government. The government is with the Father. The government is with the Lord. We simply seek the Word. We seek the Lord and the Lord give us direction. There is no longer uh, I give orders, you give orders. And God does not give any orders. The children, they saw that situation. They said, let's go forward. Why is that? Because the children, it's not that the children are going to give orders. But it is in the, under, the understanding of the children. Because the, the child is, is, speaks about the new birth. The one that is in dependency of the father. And who gives orders is the father. So the children, they, they brought logic and understanding that the parents were lost without knowing what to do. Thanks to this situation, they didn't know what to do. But now they heard a child, because in a marriage, there needs to be the dependency on the father. When the couple understand this, when the couple seeks firstly the things of the Lord, everything else will be added on to them. Amen? So here's the instruction from the part of the Lord. Or family that's here, a couple that may be represented by a person, or maybe both of them, they're here in the service. If there has been disagreement, or if there's been lack of comprehension and harmony, allow the Lord, invite Jesus to be present. Stay with us, Lord. Stay with us. Don't leave off of the past. Do not cancel the word. 
go back to the Word, go back, uh, start listening to the instruction from the Lord, seek the Lord and make the invitation. Be with us. Come to live with us. Amen. May the Lord bless us. Let's pray, bring the service to a close, and soon after, we're going to make ourselves available. If anybody needs an assistance, we are here at the disposal of the brethren. Amen. Let's bring it to a close, finishing. Whoever can stand up, you can stand up or remain seated. Lord God, at this moment, we want to glorify your name, Lord, for yet another week that is beginning in your presence. Because we know, Lord, that once again, you will be present in our lives. May you at this moment operate in the hearts, remove any doubt, moving, Lord, everything that many times hinders the relationship or the, the lack of peace and lack of harmony, and that you may also remove the coldness of the hearts, removing, Lord, the uncertainty and insecurity, and to pray spiritual life, the life you can only find in Jesus. Lord, may this service, we may use the service, Lord, to reach hearts tonight, and their spirit may find a place, find room, and God, that you may renew, awaken in us the desire of going to heaven, to live in eternity with the, with the Lord. Lord, may we have the same desire of Rebecca and also of, this, of these two disciples, Lord, stay with us because we want to depart with you, Lord. Receive our service and adoration that we say in the name of Jesus. Amen. And let me say the great, wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen, my brethren. Uh, we are making ourselves available to everyone. If you need an assistance, we can provide this. I want to say goodbye to everyone with the grace of the Lord. Our next service is going to be Tuesday at 8 o'clock at the night. To all the peace of the Lord Jesus. do Brasil. Obrigado por ter aberto a gente participar. Deus abençoe. Obrigado.